All right, let's preview the Rangers. Panthers, game two going down tonight at the Garden with Joe and Steve of the Broadway Block Podcast. I got Joe on my left. I got Steve on my right. Guys, let's talk some Rangers hockey. You ready? Ready. All right, Joe, I'm going to start with you, man. In order for the Rangers to get off to a fast start, what do they have to do? What do you think is the biggest first period adjustment Peter Laviolette makes? Well, I think eye test wise, watching game one, you saw that the Panthers were a more physical team. So I think tonight we need to match their physicality. And in that first period, I think we need to come up with some big hits. I think Truba needs to be setting the tone early, getting the garden rocking with some physicality, winning pucks in the neutral zone. And I think if the play's physical, the goals will come after and we'll set the tone early and get off to a good lead. Steve, what about you? I think, to me, the biggest concern early was the shot discrepancy. I mean, we're a team that looks for high-danger opportunities, and we did outchance them in high-danger opportunities, but we need to put more volume on net and kind of, you know, I feel like the team leans itself a little bit more to trying to make those cute passes, and if it's not there, whether it be from the defensive structure or what, um, if we're not getting those looks, quite simply, more pucks have to go on net. This team is capable of cashing in on, you know, dirty, greasy opportunities, and like Joe said, if you can, you know, win some of those puck battles, especially up front, I think we can cause a little bit more havoc for Bobrovsky. Joe, you mentioned the energy uh, uh, to go out to go up in the garden. Uh, Matt Rimpy brings that energy. So I'm gonna start with you on this one. You think there's too much hype with the whole play Matt Rimpy storyline? Uh, a little bit, because obviously Laviolette knows what he's doing. He's the guy who was brought in to figure out what Gerard Gallant could not figure out. So I feel like he's pushed the right buttons of the lineup all year. So if he felt like Matt Rempe needed to be in the lineup, he would have them in here. So if you go on Twitter, you're going to see everybody wants Matt Rempe on there. I love the physicality of him, but you know now he's getting called by the refs before he even hits somebody. So obviously Lavi knows he has that card in his back pocket. So I think he's going to use it when he needs to. I don't know if that's tonight, but we shall see. Uh, hey, Steve, uh, people love the energy. People love his physicality, but they're calling him a liability. Do you agree with that? Well, it's tough to really impact the game as much as you would like someone to only playing six minutes a game. I think that we really saw it in the Hurricane series where, you know, there was a few moments late in the games where Matt wasn't seeing the ice and that was – a call that Laviolette made just based on how he saw the first three lines gelling. And, you know, there's, it's a double-edged sword. Like there's definitely merit to wanting to roll four lines. I do feel like with the addition of Philip Heedle, uh, you know, Will Cooley sliding down to more of a fourth line role, and then you roll out VC and Goodrow with him, you know, to me, I feel like that gives us a better full roster and the ability to roll four lines, which seems like Laviolette is aiming to do with this decision. Steve, I'm going to stay on you with this one. Down 0-1 at the Garden for Game 2 tonight. Who has to show up big and have themselves a guard moment Game 2? Well, I think Mika has shown that he's, you know, pulling away a little bit better than he was during the regular season. But I think we're yet to see that, you know, huge game out of Mika where, you know, he's the catalyst. I think we've seen some, you know, game-winning production from Artemi Panarin, the clips that you just reeled. The, you know, Trocek and Laugh, he's been, you know, unbelievable, these three. But, you know, we really want to see that game out of Mika. And, you know, we have that Kreider hat trick. I think he's the missing piece right now that hasn't fully produced to what we know he's capable of. Joe, who has to ball out at the guard, man? It's got to be Vincent Trocek. You got to make sure that you make the Florida Panthers realize that they should have never let you walk and that mm. he's going to be the guy. He's proved it all year. He moved up to the second line center. And he's been a catalyst on that laugh and Panarin line. I think tonight he gets physical. I think he has a couple apples, maybe even gets a goal. Joe, I'm going to stay with you on this one again. So we talked about who needs to step it up. But who's that guy that we're not talking about? That could be that X factor and tie this series up through his play. I don't think it's one guy per se. But I think it's time that we need the third and fourth line. We saw production from them in uh, against the Capitals. I think we need them to step up to get a little pressure off the big guns. And then if we take a little pressure off the big guns, the first two lines, I think the goals will come from the first two lines. So I think we need the four third and fourth line to gel. That's who I think we need to step up tonight. Steve, whose stock can go up if they ball out? Who's your X factor? 
I mean, we've seen Philip Heedle have some big playoff moments, and we just touched on the roster, you know, conversation. But if he sees ice tonight, I feel like him potting one and getting that monkey off his back. I mean, you have to remember he hadn't played in a really long time, and I think people were just, you know, very quick to react to that first game where, you know, I think everyone is kind of expecting him to just come out. Um, but he's had some strong games since he's been back. I, you know, the, the scorecards wouldn't really align with that, but. You know, Philip Heedle gets one. That third line especially has needed a scoring touch. They've been a really good defensive third line for us and a shutdown pair, only being out for, I think, one goal throughout the two series. So, you know, if Heedle gets one and that third line can get a little bit more dynamic, like Joe said, I think it would take a lot of the pressure off the top lines for sure. Steve, game two prediction, go. Four to one, Lafreniere game winner. Joe, game two prediction. I'm going to say I got to agree with Steve 4-1. I think we're bouncing back tonight. I think Igor has a great night and shows us why he's one of the best goaltenders in the league. Ooh, four goals. There's a lot of whoa going on there with four goals. All right, fellas, uh, tell the people they can find you uh, Find you guys. Joe, go ahead. Uh, you can find us on Twitter, Instagram, Broadway Block Podcast. Um, look for us. We do a, a weekly show every week. We, lo we love the Rangers. Would love for you guys to check us out. All right. We're going to have you guys on uh, again sometime soon. Thank you guys for jumping on and uh, taking your time out your day. Go Rangers. Let's go Rangers. Likewise, man. Thank you.